Thank you so much for staying with us and welcome to the first segment where we'll be unpacking the Edo State Governorship election and its implications for Nigeria's democracy. Now, the recently concluded uh, governorship election has actually brought discussion about current state and the future of Nigeria's democracy and from party politics and candidate selection to the role of INEC, security agencies and voter participation. Now, many critical factors came into play. Now, in this, uh, on this segment, we are privileged to have join us virtually from the United Kingdom, Dr. Tony Agbans, uh, for ease of pronunciation anyway, we like to call him Dr. Tony Agbans this morning. Uh, he's a global affairs analyst, a very senior lecturer at the anglo riskin University, London, a member of the diaspora Akpakomeza movement. Welcome, Dr. Tony, and glad to have yeah. you on board. Good morning, uh, Dan. Uh, it's my pleasure to be on the program this morning, and good morning to every Edolite across the world. All right, uh, Dr. Tony, you have been a key player as far as uh, electionary process in the country is concerned. I would, like to, uh, I would like you to walk us through how would you assess the fairness and transparency of the just concluded Edo election, the transparency from all parts, from security aspect, INEX aspect, the candidate, the selection process, and what is the way forward? Dr. Tony. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate every Edo son and daughter, both at home and abroad, on the success of the Edo State 2024 governorship election, which took place on the 21st of September, 2024. Uh, we are happy that uh, despite all the hype and despite all the um, various things that we were hearing before the election, the election has come and gone and um, peaceful. There was no recorded loss of life, at least during the election. So I want to congratulate uh, the winner of the election, uh, His Excellency, the Governor-elect, uh, Senator Monde Okbebolo, a.k.a. Akpakomiza, and his deputy, uh, Right Honorable Dennis Idaosa, and everyone that was part of that party. I also want to congratulate all the other candidates that took part in the election. Like we always say, an election is a contestation, and uh, one person must win. So I, I say that also. I also want to uh, congratulate all members of the Diaspora Akpakomiza movement, a cross-party movement, uh, across 56 countries of the world, in Europe, in Asia, in America, in the Middle East, even in Africa, we have members, a cross-party movement uh, that supported uh, you know, Senator Monday uh, Okwewolo. So congratulations to everyone. So to your question, uh, Dan, I want to say that uh, all the agencies you mentioned, I think they did their bit in the, in the election that just had. Uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission. You know, they're always in the eye of the storm, uh, facing uh, the barriers all the time um, with, you know, criticism, you know, people not happy with what they are doing and all that. So the, the police, the, um, our local uh, security agencies, everyone that contributed, even the people that came out to vote, even though we have some issues that we'll discuss on that one, the, the voter turnout, we'll talk about that. So I think uh, in terms of the election, I would say that one of the things that um, I wasn't really comfortable with was the fact uh, that there was a lot of name calling. And uh, at a point, it was no longer about issues. It was no longer, longer about what the Edo people really uh, want to hear about education, about healthcare, about agriculture, road infrastructure, uh, art and tourism, sports, you know, uh, and people were just like, you know, throwing uh, expletives at each other. So I don't think that is uh, how uh, our democracy can evolve. So we see this very much at the federal level uh, during the last election that was held uh, in 2023. And then this one off election, it happened again. I think uh, it's high time we grow above those uh, uh, pre uh, way of uh, campaigning. 
Okay, uh, let's quickly uh, take it a little bit uh, further now. The governor-elect, talking about Senator Mondo Paolo, uh, wasn't really in the media. Uh, he was nowhere to be found. And of course, records have it uh, based on previous, previous history that candidates who eventually emerged winner, who didn't really uh, deem it fit to speak to the people, they don't really perform well. We have... We have cases of uh, the president and commander in chief of armed forces and all the other, other cases uh, as example. What is the fate of the governor elect and what should Edolite expect from him at this point? Thank you very much. I think um, for this election, that's what you just raised now was very, very uh, prominent. A lot of people were talking about it. And uh, for me, this is the way I look at it as a strategist myself. Um, we, we all have our ways of doing things, and uh, we all have our strength, areas of strength, and how we want to do things. I, I want to say that for the governor elect, Senator Modi Opewolo, I think what, what he did was actually talking to the people. So if you, if you watch uh, his campaign, he, he was using very simple terms, uh, simple terminologies you know, talking, you know, to the ordinary Edo voter. Yes, um, you know, this media interview, they are, they are important. Uh, and I think for him, he felt like, like he said during the BBC interview, he felt like, I think he was not taking his, um, his silence, you know, as a, as a tactic. I think he said that during the BBC interview that he did. So, there was uh, a lot of pressure as well, and uh, most people feel that uh, um, he, he was uh, docking uh, media interviews. But when you look at it, overall, I think his style was, let me go and talk to the people, the real voters. And uh, he did that very well across the 192 uh, words. So then coming to performance, um, yes, I, I know what you are actually talking about. Uh, you are talking about some things that have happened in the past. Like I always say, um, look, we, we cannot read the mind construction by looking at the face of somebody, of, of a man. I, I think it was Shakespeare that made that uh, a quotation in the play Macbeth. You, you cannot. So I always believe that politicians, um, they campaign okay, in prose and they govern in poetry. So what that means is that no matter what most of these politicians tell us during campaigns, the truth is, if they have no positive mindset, they are not going to do anything. So when it comes to, comes, comes to the area of somebody having the gift of the gab, you know, being able to you know, speak fluent English, being able to you know, articulate here and there, at the end of the day, what most of these politicians that we have seen before, from my experience, is that they get into office and they do nothing. I think for us, we should look at somebody's antecedent. What has this person been doing in his life? What are the areas he has imparted life? And for uh, the governor elect, Senator Monde Okbewolo, I don't want to sound patronizing. This, this is no longer a campaign. I believe that those Edo, Edo state people should give him a chance. Because when you look at from uh, findings some of us have done, in fact, some of the massive things he has done in the Edo central senatorial district, they are mind-boggling. And you begin to wonder that if a man can have this kind of mindset, what will he do when he actually becomes uh, the head of government in the state? So those are some of the things. But whether he's going to do it, that would depend on him. Because like I said, it's only God that knows uh, tomorrow from today. Mention of something that is very, very striking and very important. And I think at this point, every right thing in Nigeria, they are watching you now to get your reaction. Talking about INEX performance. Now, it's normal for after every electionary period, a season in the country, INEX is always in the eye of the storm. What is your honest assessment of INEX performance? As far as this Edo governorship election is concerned, what, we're, what did they do wrong? How can they amend it? Yeah, I think for, yeah, yeah, you, you use the right word. I, I neck always in the eye of the storm. And um, what happened in the 2023 uh, election is still very fresh in the mind of most Nigerians. 
you know, with the Beavers, iRev, uh, uh, switch off and all that. A glitch. It was a technical glitch. So I think for INEC, uh, uh, as an uh, electoral empire, they, they need to do more. I think they need to improve uh, their operational capacity because I think the, the Nigerian government has invested heavily you know, in those technologies. I think they, they, they really need to use it. When you look at this Edo election, um, we, as the Diaspora Akma Komiza movement, we had a uh, boot on the ground. We had men and women on the ground who were sending us reports. I think we, 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 we could all see that the um, different results from the polling unit, about uh, 4,519 across the 192 wards, across the 18 local government areas of Edo State, we were seeing the result in real time. So the results were there. But some of the things we are hearing now is, and which INEC will have to clear. Some people are saying that uh, what was being transmitted to the IREV, that is the INET uh, result uh, viewing uh, portal online, is different from uh, what was collected. But INEC will have to clear that. So, but in terms of the, the technology, I think it was better used this time. Uh, but like some of us, we always say, and, and, and you will agree with me that no matter how good a technology is, it is human beings that will still use it, like the one we call garbage in, garbage out. So somebody has to punch the button of the computer. So as a people, I think this is a message to INET officials, they must know that the um, survival of Nigeria's democracy depends largely on them because people will vote. So like we always say, those that can't it matters a lot. So INEC, um, we cannot give them uh, a pass mark or a fail mark yet until uh, this, the, 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 the little window of review that the law empowers, you know, uh, goes off. So, but when you, when you talk of really seeing the result being transmitted, I think uh, they did well on that this time around. Okay, away from INEC, uh, the security agencies too, they play vital pivotal role as far as the election is concerned. Now, they were on ground as far as the election is concerned, but uh, accusations, allegations are still ongoing that uh, they didn't perform well. But in your view, how will you assess their performance? Because we had a whole lot of uh, security agencies on ground, the Nigerian Police Force, the Nigerian Army. Uh, this was the first time we're even having a Chief of Defense Staff visit the Governor of the State assuring uh, everyone that it was going to go well. We had DSS everywhere was mapped up with uh, adequate security personnel. But what is your assessment on their performance and uh, how can we chart a way forward? Dr. Tony. Yeah, I, I think I, I will also add the EFCC to the list that you just read out. Mm. Yeah. They were all there. Uh, and to be honest, Dan, and this is the aspect I don't like in our you know, democratic evolution yet. Um, I live in the UK here. Uh, on the day of election, whether it's a council election or national election, and uh, nope, it's not done on weekend. Elections are done here on Thursdays, and uh, no public holiday is declared. Uh, everybody goes to work, and millions still come out to vote. So I hope we will get there uh, someday. So our um, elections are still heavily policed. So, and which is not, after 25 years, I don't think it's okay. And the reason is this, uh, and I'll put this squarely at the feet of the politicians. The desperation within the political class to grab power is just too much. And then the heat of the polity, the, the, the temperature in the, um, in the state, you know, became so high. And that was why the Inspector General of Police they, they, they didn't have a choice but to deploy about 35,000 policemen. If I went and had that number, I was like, what? 35,000? So all the police in Nigeria, they were in, in a state just for a state governorship election? So this is not good enough. So our politics should be, you know, idea-driven. Our politics should be, you know, a recall to service, not people looking at politics as an industry where they are coming to make money. The desperation is too much. So I put the blame of this heavy security uh, networking during our election at the feet of, of the uh, political elites. So this sh shouldn't be. 
it was just too much. But on the whole, I think because of the uh, volatile nature of uh, you know the pre-election uh, day, the presence of the security operative actually um, prevented uh, you know skirmishes or violence uh, from happening. Mm. And um, I don't think any of us can say that uh, any life was lost in this election last Saturday. Okay. In your um, reaction to this question, you actually made mention of uh, politicians and their desperation uh, for power. Money was exchanging hands. People were willing to sell their votes. And of course, the major players in the polls were buying and selling votes. Can we ever get to a point where Nigerians, electorates, don't need to sell their votes? And how can we cop this and put it in check? Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, and that is, this is another sad commentary on our electoral process. Uh, election day, we saw videos of, uh, you know, what you are talking about. And uh, there's been... Uh, accusations and counter accusations from all the political parties you know that uh, votes were being bought and sold um, and then you look at it why would politicians buy votes if votes don't count so which means votes actually do count and then on the other on the flip side why would citizens say their vote you know maybe for 2000 for 5000 in this election, it was alleged that some votes were being sold for 15,000 and all that. Why? And then you look at the, 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 the social and economic system as well. A lot of our people, you know, they are wallowing in abject poverty. So politicians have weaponized poverty so that when it comes to election, people are willing to, you know, to take, you know, these crumbs and vote for them. Some people have even suggested if they bring uh, money for you to vote for them, collect the money, but vote your mind. But you look at all these things. Is this the way our, our democracy is going to continue after 25 years? I remember in 1999, 2003, 2007, people were saying, oh, we just started this democracy. But for 25 years, half a century of uh, elections, and we are still having all this. So we, the people, also need to look at ourselves. I know I'll be saying this, or people will be saying, oh, uh, people, it's our money, we have to take it. Yes, but we all need, you know, a mindset reset, mindset reset, so that we know that if at the end of the day, we collect money and vote the wrong people, these people, when they get into office, they want to recoup their investments. Because for a lot of these politicians, you know, they see politics as uh, investment, just the way people buy shares in the stock uh, market. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that is how they see, they see elections. So okay. they spend billions upon billions. When mm -hmm. they get it, they want to recoup. Dr. Tony, we are running out of time, but let's see how to manage it and wrap it up from here. Uh, the current administration, uh, headed by Governor Gordon Obaseki, whose administration or uh, whose tenure now will elapse uh, November 12th or so, and the new government will be taking the center stage. This administration has done well to an extent. Uh, so many reforms has taken place. Where should the um, administration or the uh, where should Governor elect Mondo Pabulo start from? Expectations are high. The fears of many is he's going to take Edo back. What are your expectations as an individual? Thank you very much. Um, I think. For the governor elect, Senator Monde Okbebolo, uh, aka Akpakomiza, he's got a lot uh, on his table. And uh, I think during the campaign, he has promised that he's going to hit the ground running uh, from day one. So for me, the uh, critical areas, just like he enumerated in his uh, five point agenda, for me, is, is education, um, health care, and then infrastructure security i will just add that one as a fourth axis so those for me are key and then other areas like agriculture um, tourism which those states should actually benefit from a lot 
So by the time it does that, um, I believe uh, those people, um, all the fears that people are having, they will be allayed. Uh, I want, and I want to tell uh, those state people, um, government come and government go. But the measure of a man is keeping to his words. So let us hold politicians accountable. So by the time uh, the governor elects Senator Modi Okpavolo is sworn in on November 12th, immediately we start holding him, him accountable. And then if he's getting it, uh, we give commendation. If he's not getting mm. it, we also criticize objectively. Okay, so let us lastly, not, uh, Dr. Tony. Uh, yeah. patronize uh, these uh, politicians. Yes. So lastly, the creation of the diaspora agency in those states, uh, probably the next government come on board, is it possible? Is it obtainable? Is it achievable? Yes, uh, and uh, the, the governor-elect has promised that uh, the long-sought Edo uh, Diaspora Agency will come on board uh, during his administration. So we believe that, and we are looking forward to it. Okay, well, maybe in our, in our next uh, meeting we'll be uh, looking at how it will improve the economy of the state and changing the narrative as far as uh, governance is concerned. Thank you so much, Dr. Tony Agbons, for taking time to be with us on the program this morning. We sincerely appreciate it. Thank you, Dan. It's been my pleasure.